Monday, Thursday. The night of the Last Supper. The night of foot washing. Is it the same night? What? Could be. The correct answer is yes. yes. You see, the night we read John chapter 13, which we as a, as a congregation looked at a few weeks ago, right? It was like the second week of Lent. We read John chapter 13. And John chapter 13 started us on that night, right? John chapter 13 is the beginning of the trek that Jesus takes to his death and starts the night in John where he washes the disciples' feet. And in Matthew, Mark, and Luke, he gives us a new supper from the Passover meal. Because if you noticed in the reading, when I read it, right at the beginning of John chapter 13, it was before the festival of the Passover. It was not the festival of the Passover, but it was before. And we read this reading tonight where Jesus takes off his outer robe, he puts a towel around his waist, he goes around and he washes the disciples' feet, and then we get some verses a little bit later where he says, I give you a new commandment, that you should love one another as I have loved you. And he shows them this love how? Pretty simple. By washing their feet, right? Because, remember, only a servant was supposed to wash people's feet. The owner of a house, if you went into their house, would have... A, a basin and a, and a jug of water and a towel by the door so that you could wash your feet. Or they might have a servant to wash your feet for you, but the master or the teacher would never wash the feet of someone else. But he showed them that this is how we're supposed to love one another. So people know that we follow after Jesus if we... Do things the right way. Make sure that we always observe everything that we're supposed to do. Read the right passages. Say the right words. It's not about doing things the right way. It's not about understanding what society tells us we have to do. And understanding the right ways to do things. Because in God's eyes there is no right way other than to... Love one another. I read an interesting quote today from, and I'm going to butcher it. I'm not. This is not by any stretch of the imagination an exact quote, but it was from Pope John Paul, I believe, that talked about how God does not judge us. God gives us love and loves us unconditionally. And if we choose to live in that love and follow after that love, then we live in that. And if we choose not to, that is our own judgment on ourselves of denying the love of God. It's not God that sends us away. It's our own choice that sends us away from God. But tonight in John chapter 13, we miss some things. Because it's very easy to say, Jesus took off his robe and he washed the feet of his disciples. And that's what we're supposed to do. And that's why in a little bit, here in a little bit, we're actually going to do that up here. For anyone brave enough, come up here and take your shoes off. I promise, I just took a shower a little bit ago, so. Better be Jesus. <laughs> if you're brave enough to come up here and, and do that not only will you get your foot foot washed one singular right? you don't need both but you will also wash someone else's foot so it's a both hand kind of thing if, you're, if you can do that I would recommend that you do that because Jesus tells us this is what we're supposed to do. But the question lies in whose feet did Jesus wash? If you look at our reading tonight, John chapter 13, we read verses 1 through 7, and then we skip to 31b through 30 something, 35. So we leave out 18 through 31a and 36 through 38.
which are probably the most important verses to understand Jesus' statement of, love one another as I have loved you. Because here's the question. If you were to throw a dinner party and invite people to come, who would you invite? Your neighbors that you like. Right? Notice I, that you like. I clarified that statement. Your neighbors that you like or get along with. Friends, people that you, that you really care for, right? You would probably not invite the person who's been talking behind your back. You probably wouldn't invite the person that you know really doesn't like you and says things to other people that try to bring you down. You probably wouldn't bring the person who, who says that they're always going to be there, but you know never will be. Right? These are not the people that we would invite to a dinner party if we were going to throw a dinner party. These are the exact people that Jesus washes the feet of and spends his last night on earth with. You see, because verses 18 through 30 are all about Judas, right? They ask, who is going to betray you? And he goes through this long thing. And after doing all of this, Judas leaves and it was night and it was dark. You see, Judas was there when Jesus took off his outer robe and tied that towel around his waist. Judas was one of the people that Jesus came to and he washed his feet. Knowing all in full well what was going to happen. That later on that night, in a garden, he was going to get a kiss. And that was going to identify him to the people that had come to arrest him. Yet he still washed his feet. And he still told his disciples... To love each other as I have loved you. And just after our verses end, right, where Jesus says, Where I'm going, you cannot come, but you must love one another. Simon Peter said to him, Lord, where are you going? Jesus answered, Where I'm going, you cannot follow me now, but you will follow afterward. And Peter said to him, Lord, why can't I follow you? Now I will lay down my life for you. Jesus answered, you'll lay down your life for me, very truly I tell you, before the cock crows you will deny me three times. Not only did he wash the feet of the man he knew was going to hand him over into the most bitter punishment, the greatest anguish that any one person could ever go through, he also washed the feet of a person who said that he would stand up for him and die for him when he knew that by the time that that other person had turned him in, that he was going to be denied by him as well. See, Jesus tells us something that is very hard for us to do. Because if we truly look at what he tells us to do, and we understand what happened on this night, the night where he took bread, he blessed it, he broke it, and he gave it to everybody, saying, take and eat, this is my body given for you. And then he picked up the cup, the cup of... No. Remember from last Friday. Oh. No. Redemption. In the Seder meal, right? Even though in John it's not a Seder meal, but in the night when he takes that meal and he transforms that Seder meal into this meal for us, he takes the bread and he gives it to his disciples. And then he takes the cup, right? There are four cups in a Seder meal. And by the time he got to the cup that they take after dinner, the fourth cup, notice which finger, the fourth cup, the third, the third cup, yeah, the third cup, not the fourth cup, the third cup, is the cup of redemption. And he said, this cup is now truly a cup of redemption. It is the cup of the new covenant in my blood for all of you. On that night, the night that he washed his disciples' feet, the night that he showed us exactly what love is, and invited all of us to love that way. To love the person that doesn't love you back. To love the person who's going to turn you in. To love the person who you think is always going to be there for you but never is. That's the love that Christ calls us to do. That's the love that Christ calls us to give. That's the love that he gave to each and every one of us. So on this night, remember exactly how much Jesus loves you and exactly everything that he went through and know that he calls you to do something impossible but that he's not asking you to do it alone but that he's always going to be with you and help you to show the love that he's given to you to all of the world. 
So love each other as Christ has loved you. And that is how they will know that you are truly one of his disciples.